Given the very tense atmosphere that prevailed in the country, which kept everyone on the edge, expecting the very worst to happen, on account of the very combative and bitterly acrimonious campaigns conducted by the two main political parties, the PDP and the APC, in the run-up to the 2015 general election, the very peaceful way the elections eventually ended, with the main contenders in the race for the nation's number one seat displaying unprecedented show of sportsmanship, has continued to confound even the most pessimistic amongst us, and shamed all those who never gave our country the slightest chance to come out of that delicate situation with our heads high up. The God of Nigeria showed off for us at the moment when all hope seemed lost. It was therefore perfectly fitting and most thoughtful that the inauguration of the new government in Nigeria to set in motion the fifth civilian dispensation in the 16 years of unbroken multi-party democratic system in Nigeria should take off with a thanksgiving service at the National Worship Center, Abuja. The 2015 Presidential Thanksgiving and Inauguration Interdenominational Church Service, with the theme, Give Thanks in All Circumstances, was attended by Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan and his wife, then Patient Jonathan, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, GCON-SAN, and his wife, Mrs. Dolakbo Oshibajo. Former Head of State, Dr. Yakubu Gowan, APC National Chairman, Chief John Odigi Oyegu, Senate President David Mark and Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Emeka Ihedioha. Also in attendance at the service were members of the National Assembly from both chambers, ministers and heads of parastatals in the Jonathan administration, and it was very heartwarming to note that the Thanksgiving Interdenominational Church Service was attended by a large assemblage of members of the All Progressive Congress. This is to demonstrate that before God, we are all one, no matter our political leanings, and we pray that the healing process will permeate all sections of the land and bring us back on the same page again as members of one indivisible country. The task at hand demands that we all work together as one to move our country to the next level. Men of God from different denominations in Christendom were also in attendance. Different choir groups also put up performances of spirit-filled songs, and this dovetailed into a praise and worship session. The service also featured Bible reading, the first from Isaiah 62 from chapters 1 to 7 was taken by the Senate President, Senator David Mark. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication signs out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will say your vindication, and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will be sore. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted, or name your land desolate. You will be called Hephzibah and your land Bella. But By Elsa Choir, but I could meant on some, and Can Mass Choir performed in turn before the second reading from the Bible, taken from Luke chapter 17 verses 11 to 19. This was taken by the Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, GCON.
Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The, Lord the message was delivered by Archbishop Nicholas Oko. The theme of the sermon was forgiveness. This was against the backdrop of the bad blood generated among politicians of the different divides and Nigerians as a result of the acrimonious electionary campaigns that led to the 2015 elections. Archbishop Nicholas Oko said it was time to forgive one another so that the healing process will be fast-tracked because there's so much work to be done. God forgave David. God has forgiven all of us as a country, as individuals, as political parties, and our president and his family. On the eve of your leaving office, it is appropriate to think, what have I done right? What have I done wrong? But God has assured us in his mercy that he has forgiven our sins. And because of this, it is worthy for us to give him thanks. There were intercessory prayers for the different arms of government. Those prayed for included former President Jonathan and his family, the executive, legislature and the judiciary, President Mohammed Buhari and his family, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo and his family. The church and Nigerians in general were also remembered in the special prayers. Other highlights of the Thanksgiving and inauguration interdenominational church service included special presentation to former President Goodluck Jonathan and his wife Dame Patience Jonathan as ambassadors of peace. This is done by Pastor Ayo Orishejafo, President Christian Association of Nigeria, Can. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, GCON, and his wife were also giving a special present. In his remarks, which began with a song of praise, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo prayed that God will guard and guide former President Goodluck Jonathan Steps as he takes a most deserved bow from office after 16 glorious years. that the Christian Association of Nigeria has said it all. They have said all that needs to be said about your bold and courageous act. All that we will say is a word of prayer for you, that the Lord God Almighty will cause His mercy and His compassion to remain in your life forever in the name of Jesus. And that every day of your life you will experience peace you will experience joy and that you will look back at these years in peace and joy and that the Lord God Almighty will strengthen you and that you will live long to see even the great glory of this nation in the name of Jesus. I pray also for this nation that the Almighty God will help this nation 
that the Almighty God will cause this nation to be what it has purposed it to be, a nation that all will envy and all will admire in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. The Thanksgiving session featured hearties singing, dancing and jubilation by all. In his remarks, former President Goodluck Jonathan thanked God for taking control of the situation that made the election end in a peaceful and seamless manner. He appealed to Nigerians to support the Buhari Oshibajo administration so that they can deliver more goodies to Nigeria. Dr. Goodluck Jonathan said that he will dedicate the rest of his life to working for peace in Nigeria and the rest of the world. I'm quite pleased that today we are here not to celebrate the disintegration of this country, but we are celebrating the unity of this country. So I have to thank you and I have to call you to pray for me, my wife, my family, and members of my government, ministers, and so on, as we live. But we should even pray more for the incoming government, because we are living to be private people, to manage our private businesses. They are coming in to manage the whole country. So they require more prayers. Because I can make a mistake, it will affect me probably with very few people. But if they make a mistake, it will affect the whole nation. So I call on all the Christians and all the religious bodies to pray for the incoming government, for them to succeed. Because all what we want as a nation, both Nigerians at home and abroad, is for good government, for prosperity, for unity, for peace. World. Service ended with special prayers by Pastor Ayo Orishejafo, President, Christian Association of Nigeria, Cannes.